this video, I'm gonna teach you a cool effect called the locked on stabilization or locked on tracked stabilization where the footage stays perfectly on whatever you've chosen to track. So it could be someone's face, it could be a hand, some other object. The results are really cool. It's a popular effect and uh, we're gonna dive in. I'll teach you how to do it. And if you're new here, we have over 200 videography related videos. So lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know any of the music or the equipment we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Let's jump in. Okay, I'm in the edit page inside DaVinci Resolve and I have one clip loaded. Let's play it and see what it is. So this clip is a sideways view of a person running and they're also wearing headphones. And for this effect to work, you're gonna have to have footage something like this where someone is, you know, bobbing up and down or they're skipping rope, jumping in some way. So I found this stock footage clip and I think it will work for what we are doing. To get started, let's go to the Fusion page. And a quick note about the footage you're using, you wanna make sure that there's some contrast, such as this white ring with the uh, darker headphones. Or let's say this person was facing directly to camera, then we could use maybe her nose or eyes. In those cases, or in this case where we have the uh, white circle, these would be good spots to help DaVinci Resolve uh, perform a good track to get this effect to work. And that'll make more sense in a minute. Also, we're gonna be cropping in on the footage because once this starts to stabilize and do its thing, It'll move the frame around and it will start to show a bit of the edges. So we'll need to zoom in on the footage to uh, cover the seams. And Resolve makes this pretty easy to do. I know the Fusion page can be a little bit intimidating, but with just a few clicks, you can get this tracked and stabilized and it's actually not that difficult to do. The first step is to come down where your nodes are and just right click on a blank spot, go to add tool, tracking, and we'll select tracker. And then if you hold shift and drag, you can connect both of those together. So now our in point and out point has the tracker inside and it's uh, properly connected. And then with our tracker node selected, you'll see we have this box with the green text and it says IntelliTrack. So that's actually not the one we're gonna be uh, working with. So if we go over here to the inspector, under the tracker list, we will add a tracker called point and then we will delete the IntelliTrack. And then under the adaptive mode, we will change that to best match. So if we move our mouse over our tracker, you will see that it has a boundary box now around it. And then in the top left corner, it has a white little square. So we can click and drag that and move it right to uh, where we want to track. And if you do want to zoom in, of course, you can go over here to let's say 100%. And I'm actually not at the beginning of my timeline, so I wanna make sure that I am at the front, so we'll have to adjust that again. Increase our uh, boundary box. You can call it like the search area for where the tracking box will uh, perform a search. The larger you make the search box, the more accurate the result will be. However, it will also take longer to track, so just keep that in mind, there is sort of a sweet spot. And we will increase the match tolerance by a bit. And then from there, we can go to where it says tracking and hit the forward tracking button. And once it's done, if it looks like it's still in the same spot, then it probably did a pretty good job. So let's go up to operation and then we'll change it to match move. And that will give us a whole bunch of other options. Under Merge, we'll change it to the background only. Now at this stage, you should be done. Before I show you though, I want to undo the tracker, press play, and this is what the original footage looks like. And then here it is with the locked on tracking effect. So it's just that easy to do. You basically just track the spot that you want and make a few clicks and then it is done. It essentially does all the tracking itself and it's pretty accurate. All right, let's try this again on a different clip. We'll get rid of this one. Okay, let's go back to the Fusion page. Once again, we will add our tracker. Hold shift and connect it. Then we will add the other tracker, delete the first one, position this where we would like it. 
and then we will increase the size of the search box, change the adaptive mode to best match, we'll increase the tolerance just a bit, and then we will track forward. Once it's done, we'll go to operation, match move, switch it to background only. And then since we trimmed the footage on the edit page when we brought it in, you'll see that the in and out points where the tracking data is uh, will have the effect on. So now, as I mentioned earlier, and what I didn't do yet on the first clip is we need to zoom in a little bit. So we'll just do it on this clip so you understand it. So to fix that, we can go to our edit page and simply go to the spot where it probably is zoomed in the most and adjust it so that we don't see any of the black edge of the frames. Okay, if we go to our first frame for when it starts, you can see the effect. And that looked pretty good. Now, of course I could have tracked the whole frame, but for the purposes of this tutorial, that would have taken a while. So I just showed you uh, just the middle section of it, but it is pretty easy to do. And you can get some really cool results, regardless if the person is facing you or away from you. And again, it doesn't have to be uh, a running clip or like a skipping clip. It could be like someone throwing a ball and you track the ball flying through the air or any sort of moving object. And yeah, just make sure that you are using the point tracker, otherwise you can get some weird results. Okay, that's how you do the locked on stabilization effect. I hope it was helpful. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from us in the future, we have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know any of the music or the equipment we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.